Cyber threats are like weeds in a lawn. They're constantly trying to grow in the midst of the chaos. All right, that was stupid. In today's video, I want to give a step-by-step -step overview of how to protect yourself online. I use this security workflow on a daily basis. It's a good imperative balance between security and convenience while attempting to protect yourself online amongst the chaos. This is recommendations that I would recommend you do on a daily basis, starting out with the number one recommendation of password management, password managers. I still recommend this to my peers and everyone to solidify how lame I am in this recommendation. Young Grant, he was attempting to date. He came up with a date idea, showcasing what password managers were to my well, my date or now my wife. Now you got to get your priorities straight when it comes to partnerships and security. All right, that's stupid. Anyway, password managers, they store all of your passwords in encrypted vaults and only you remember one very strong master password. You can automatically generate strong, unique passwords for all of your accounts and they're synced across all of your devices. I use Bitwarden, which is open source. You can self-host this encrypted vault, but there are many other password management providers and tools out there. I recommend that you stick to the main ones. So Bitwarden, 1Password, KeePass, if you're looking for a local password manager, maybe even Passbolt as a good enterprise solution. Next is multi-factor authentication. Apply MFA to all of your accounts, especially when it comes to your password manager, your email accounts, your social media, and your banking accounts. Now, not all MFA is created equal. SMS one-time based codes are still considered to be the weakest. Still turn this on if this is an option. Now, as a side note, major banks, investments, institution, healthcare providers, this is literally the only option they offer. It just goes to show you the inertia in this industry, maybe even the pure laziness. Um, but SMS-based codes, they're the, definitely the weakest form. Some other forms of authentication that I would recommend from weakest to strongest include one-time codes sent to an authenticator app. Now, I would recommend that you decouple this from a password manager. So password managers typically do provide an application for these one-time codes. I would recommend you use a completely different separate application just to decouple that uh, dependency, I guess. Number two is pass keys. So these provides a quote unquote phishing resistant way to ensure that your private key is held by you and in your application. You are starting to see a lot of these pass keys recommended by big tech providers, and you can store these pass keys inside your password manager. Everything relates to the password manager, but really in all seriousness, pass keys is a great recommendation. And finally, our hard Hardware keys, use these for the accounts that need to be the most secure. So remember the tyranny of default when it comes to MFA. If SMS codes and your hardware key are enabled as ways of getting in, well, the attacker can always use the weaker forms of authentication. A quick overview of my strategy, I harden all of my email accounts in my password management vault with a FIDO2 uh, Yubico hardware key. Everything else is disabled in these Google or uh, password management accounts. That's the only thing I have. Now, there are backup codes that you can get, and I have these stored in two ways. I have them printed in a fireproof safe, and they're encrypted on an external hard drive and on my computer. If an attacker were to get my password, they still wouldn't be able to get in because they would need this FIDO2 hardware key, and that's the only way you can get in. Uh, I have one FIDO2 key as a backup in my fireproof safe and one that's just laying on my desktop. I'm not too worried about physical threats. Now, all social media accounts and any other accounts have MFA turned on, OTP codes sent to my authenticator application. And this is kind of my way of how I use multi-factor authentication on the day-to-day -day basis. Next is your backup strategy. I recommend to absolutely have one. Now I compartmentalize my backup strategy into online and offline backups in terms of a priority of my files. So my online backups, I use a program called sync.com, which allows me to have a shared drive on my file explorer or on my desktop. It automatically uploads to sync.com in an encrypted in the cloud. So you can have this shared drive where I can store all my files and they can be synced to the cloud if need be, if I lost my access to my desktop. And then for my offline backups, I use an external drive and I back up important files on this drive stored in a fireproof safe. And then finally, I have a backup sheet. This is important information that's printed out and stored also in this fireproof safe. 
In case I die tomorrow, my wife won't be screwed. Hopefully not. Password managers, still a thing. Next is Wi-Fi and network segmentation on your home network. A few words on Wi-Fi. First is if you're into technology, if you are familiar with how to work with technology, I do recommend that you get an actual router instead of using your ISP issued one. I use the Unify Dream Machine, and I recommend this because there's a lot of extensibility and control that you can have in your Wi-Fi router um, that default ISP issued ones may or may not have, as well as just decoupling that, staying away from ISP. And that, that's just something that I would recommend. Now, in terms of your actual router settings, change the default admin password on the LAN side and never expose that to the WAN side, of course. If you feel like this is important and you have physical threats that may or may not be attempting to log on to your Wi-Fi, make sure that WPA3 encryption is turned on by default. And finally, network segmentation. Right now, I have three subnets. One is for all of my guest devices, so think TVs, IoT devices, and my wife's stuff. It resides there. Then I have a work subnet. This is a slash 30 subnet, which has my one work device from work from home. And then I have my personal. This is what I have for my desktop on YouTube and all of this stuff. Uh, so three subnets just to kind of prioritize the isolation of devices, especially those IoT. I don't like them having the same access trying to scan all of my Wi-Fi devices. Next is antivirus. You don't need antivirus in 2025 for most consumer-based online browsing. You can check out this video I did a while back explaining why you don't need third-party AV. That basically the TLDR is the native endpoint AVs that reside on the operating system are uh, as good or if not better because they have lower level visibility into kernel operations. I, so I recommend sticking with Microsoft Defender for Windows-based machines and Apple X Protect for Mac OS. Make sure they're on, always being updated in the background. Next is freezing your credit bureau accounts. So for those of you in the United States or maybe outside of countries who have something similar, make sure you create accounts at the three big credit bureaus and make sure to actually even register to them. Uh, there have been threat actors that have been able to even just register accounts in your name and impersonate the users. Once you've done that, make sure that you always have a hardened freezed on all three of those bureaus. And if you ever need to open up your credit reports, applying to credit cards, home loans, you can just uh, open a thaw, which allows you to have maybe a week or two where it's opened and then it will automatically close. DNS security. So for those of you who perhaps maybe want a little bit more security, a little bit more privacy and staying away from ISP snooping, I do recommend a privacy-based DNS resolver service. So in your browser of choice, make sure to navigate to the DNS settings and choose DNS over HTTPS or DOH as it's known. On operating systems, you can also hard code your default DNS to something like Cloudflare's 1.1.1.1 or Quad 9's 9.9.9.9. It is completely up to you. I do recommend that you do this. And finally is your browser-based security. So your browser, it's usually the gateway to the internet. I do recommend installing uBlock Origin as a plugin uh, to help with your online experience, blocking ads. It can also block malicious websites. I like this. It's really easy. There's also a, another browser plugin called Square X that I tried out a while back. I really like it because you can basically provision sandboxed accounts for phishing emails or if you're wanting to investigate a file. This is a good plugin to have if you're wanting to spin up a virtual machine and just analyze various different files, especially for those in security. It can be a little handy. So this is my personal security strategy, that the one that I recommend to everyday users. It may appear to be a lot, but once you kind of establish this workflow, everything works together. And this is kind of a fine balance between convenience and security. Certainly, it's not the most secure. And my OPSEC, well, I suck at my OPSEC. That's, that's pretty much given. I'll leave all the links in the description below. And until the next time, have a good day.